Hi everyone, welcome back to AFC Action Figure Captures. Uh, today's video is probably going to be a little negative, unfortunately. Um, I recently picked up the new Skeletor figure from the Masters of the Universe Revelation line. Um, the series has had mixed reviews, but the actual design of the characters are actually pretty cool looking. And so I thought I'd start by buying at least the Skeletor figure and seeing what I thought of the quality of the figures and just the overall designs and, you know, see how good they would look or, or, or not look possibly. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, and I thought, uh, you know, who better to start with than Skeletor? And I was possibly considering He-Man, but I, I decided to go Skeletor in the, to begin with. And then if I liked him enough, I would buy the He-Man. Now, unfortunately, I really was not impressed with this figure at all. It had a lot of really weird quirks, and uh, the plastics feel like they're actually a lower quality than what I'm used to with action figures as of late, and um, just odd design flaws as well that really tended to bother me while trying to shoot this figure. Now, keep in mind, I'm basing this mainly on trying to do for, you know photographs of the figure and set the figure up in poses and you know, that sort of idea, and so this may not affect those that just kind of want to have a cool-looking figure and just basically want, you know, another Masters of the Universe figure in their collection, and everyone may not feel the same way. This is just based on my experiences trying to, you know, set the figure up and to take photographs of the figure and to pose him in uh, some interesting ways to try and get as good a shot as possible, and he wasn't exactly the best... Uh, figure I've ever owned for that. He's possibly one of the worst for that, to be honest with you. Uh, let's jump in. <clears throat> so here we have the figure, of course, and this is just kind of our little splash page. And uh, yeah, honestly, the nicest thing about this figure, in my opinion, was actually the staff. And the staff looks great. It's well sculpted. The figure is fairly well sculpted as well. There's some weird choices that were made that kind of left, you know, a little bit to be desired. And I'll go into those as we look at the new, you know, the uh, coming edits. Now, a lot of people have seen the edits, and they seem pretty happy with them, and they think I did a pretty good job with the actual look of the edits. Um, yeah, I like them myself. I just don't really like the figure. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So this was the first edit I did. I'm... Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking about with the eyes here on the staff, so please ignore that. But uh, we'll start off with just kind of some of the issues with the figure. Um, first thing is the wash on the face. That's a lot to be desired. I mean, it was really cool that actually Mattel decided to try to do a wash and to kind of give some, uh, you know, uh, detail to the face and to kind of separate the face mainly from the teeth, which... Were kind of my other issue. Um, I, I kind of like the grin, but at the same time, it's a little too big, so it really takes away from the actual look of the face because all you're drawn to is these giant teeth, and uh, the face is so much darker than what the teeth are that you really can't focus on anything but. Um, another choice that actually comes up a bit later, and you'll see it in the design, are the wrists of the figure and how obvious the, the gap is between the hands and the wrists. Uh, when you're swapping hands out, you can really see the actual gaps. Um, they're just really, really obvious, and it kind of takes away from the look of the figure. Uh, oops, sorry, I jumped ahead there for a second. This is uh, the second edit I did. I was trying to use various backgrounds that I found online. And forgive me, uh, the artist did the, the, the artwork did a great job. And please, when you look up uh, Snake Mountain <laughs> Designs, you can see the name of the artists that were involved in the artwork. Um, yeah, again, we have the figure here. The obvious joints and everything were just a little distracting. And um, that's nowhere near the worst of it. I, you know, you can always live with those sort of, you know, design choices and everything and the way they actually look. And overall, they did a fairly good job of it. It's just... As I go further, I'll explain why it was so disappointing with this figure. So here we have the figure posing with his actual accessories. And you got four hands with the figure. You got two open hands to hold the weapons. You got a palm, like a open palm sort of hand, which I'll cover in a few seconds here. And just 
why I was disappointed with that. And um, I'm going to be splicing in some extra video that I shot of my issues with the figure and why it was so bad. Uh, and that'll be mixed in with the stills here. And I'll, I'll, you know, they may seem a little out of place, but I just wanted to, sh you know, film those shots just to explain why, you know, it, it, it seems so bad. And uh, they'll just be like an, a video clip. There won't be any, any audio, but it, it'll just kind of show you. It's like, uh, I'll mention when I get to that point why those things were bothering me. And then I'll have the video that I'll actually follow up on, you know, what the issues were. Okay, so here we have the accessories, of course. We have the, uh, you know, the, the grasping hands for both sides of the, the, the figure. The secondary hand's a bit odd. You can't really see it there because I guess I went a little too dark on the, uh, the shadows. But he's got like this odd pointing finger for the second grasping hand, and I guess it was just to try and make it look a little different than the previous hand. You can see the gap there in the wrist that I was mentioning. You can just kind of see with that little blue highlight around the wrist. That gap is so obvious on both sides where you can really notice that the hands are interchangeable. And it's, it's a little distracting and kind of bothersome. Uh, but that's just my opinion, mind, mind you. You know, I just, I, I didn't like it. Um, but this pointing finger thing with the secondary hand, when you have the two hands mounted, and you can see he's got one closed hand for the, the grasping hand, and then this odd pointing finger choice, which I'm not quite sure what the reasoning for that was, um, especially with the issues that I had with having the figure hold the weapon. And I'll, I'll cover that in a second as well. Actually, I'll mention it now at this point. Um... The staff has got a little bit of weight to it, not very much, but when you swap the hands out, they're so loose that the figure can barely keep the item straight, unless it's either resting against his body or planted on the ground. You, like if he's actually holding it up, the hands just spin in a circle, and they won't stay put. Uh, so you have to like basically plant the staff on the ground or plant it against something just where it rests in place. Otherwise, the hands will just flip upside down and the staff ends up upside, upside down because of it. Um, <clears throat> the secondary item wasn't as bad because it isn't quite as heavy. And I mean, mind you, the staff's not very heavy. There's just enough weight to it to cause the problem, but the hands are so loose that just, you can't do anything with them except, you know, set them into a fixed position to get them to hold the weapon upright. Now that could just be my copy, but after mentioning it, uh, you know, through uh, Facebook and um, to Instagram, by, by mentioning, did anyone else have these problems? There was quite a few people that still said that their copies were like that as well, and that they had problems, but then other people said they didn't. So, you know, it, it's kind of hit or miss by the sounds of it. I guess I was just unlucky, and I got one of the copies where it had very loose joints and, like, very bad wrist joints, especially, like, on both sides. When you swap the hands, the hands just spin like, like, like they're actually meant to be a gimmick or something. They don't stay put. Um, going forward from that, the other issue I had with the figure were the legs. They actually look great. It's well sculpted. But I, I don't know if it's just that it was just too tight out of the package or what happened with it. And Someone else did mention to me after I mentioned uh, having the issue that it happened to theirs as well. But when they actually just kept moving the legs around that actually fixed the problem. But what happens is the legs are so wide apart, and when you try to bring them together to have them standing upright, they just spring back open, and they just swing like into a really wide stance. And it's very hard to set him up in like an upright position where he's just kind of standing facing forward. And um, like basically just holding his, his weapons. And sorry, I don't know why this is zooming in so much, or zooming out so much. But... um they just go into this really wide stance, and it looks cool in the photo, like, you know, when you actually set them into a, into a position, but if you're not going for that look, it gets somewhat frustrating, because you can't just have him standing straight. It's like he has this really wide stance, and it, it looks good in certain photos, and not so good in others, depending on what look you're going for. Uh, again, like I said, the sculpting on the actual weapon is pretty amazing. Like, I love this Havoc staff. I think they did an amazing job with it. And I love the, you know, the goat's head or the ram's head. It looks really, really nice. The sculpting on the actual physique of the figure is quite good. I mean, the, the heads are a little out of proportion on the entire line where they've got these smaller heads and, like, giant bodies. But 
again, design choices just for the style of the animation, and you can live with those things, and it actually does look okay. And the face, again, doesn't look as bad here as you'll notice. The, the, the grin is just too big. I mean, it, it looks good, but it's a bit much. Um, the eyes are solid black, but, but the odd thing is when the lighting hits them, they, they do add pupils, and so I decided to just add the uh, glowing eyes in each shot just to kind of give it... Uh, you know, I mean, I could have just photoshopped out the, the glare for the, the pupils, but I kind of like the way it looks, so I decided to run with it anyway and give him the glowing eyes. But, uh, yeah, that was another odd thing that I noticed in a lot of the photos is that instead of having solid black eyes, he's got these little dots from pupils with the lights reflecting off the, uh, the area of the eyes. So, you know... <laughs> It's easily fixed in Photoshop for people that are just taking photo, you know, photographs for themselves. Some of that may bother some of them because at times it looks cross-eyed because the light hits the uh, the eyes area and makes it look cross-eyed at times. Um, paint apps are actually quite nice. They did a good job. They're, they're, they're clean and everything as well. Um, the plastic used just feels really cheap. Uh, cheaper than I'm used to with a lot of action figures and beyond what I, I was used to when I was younger myself and was buying like, you know, figures that were made of solid plastic rather than the rubber that they use now. Uh, the other issue was the cape. The cape is just really cheaply made. And I mean, I was trying my best just to kind of leave it on there, but I wanted to kind of make it as dark as possible so it didn't take away from the rest of the figure. Just because of the way it was cut, it just goes straight across. It looks really boring and plain. And the material they used, they, they, they finished one side with kind of a softer feel to it. And then the other side just got on the rougher side, which is fine. It just looks cheap. And I mean, a lot of people seem to have that feeling from what I've seen about that uh, part of the figure. And a lot of them have taken the head off of the figure and the armor off and just removed the cape and had the figure without the cape. Um... I didn't like the cape, but I wasn't that bothered by it, so I just left it on the figure the whole time. Uh, let's see, here we go. <clears throat> so this is the other problem. Um, on the box art, they had this really amazing drawing of the, the actual character, and he's got his palm out like, like he does here in this photo, but his fingers are all spread open, so it looks like he's kind of reaching out, and it looks menacing. And then they give you this hand here, and the hand, it looks like he's waving hello. It doesn't look like he's actually kind of like doing the whole evil reaching pose. It just looks like he's kind of waving hello or goodbye. And on the other angles, it looks like he's doing a karate chop. It looks really, really odd. And yeah, I, I just didn't understand why they couldn't do the fingers spread out and have it look like he's actually reaching out like he was in the box, as opposed to just this sort of closed hand, open palm thing where, like I said, it looks like he's just waving hello at people. So it's kind of a weird choice, in my opinion. Uh, again, you can see those gaps for the wrists, and it just it's so obvious that it looks bad. Um... Yeah, the face again looks okay here. That wash is so dark that, like, I mean, it looks like I photoshopped all this extra, you know, detail on the face or, like, dirt on the face. But, no, that's just the figure. It, it's literally got that dark a wash on it. And so these teeth just really stand out, and it looks kind of odd. It's, yeah. It looks okay, just not great. Again, like I said, the staff looks amazing. <laughs> Personally, I love the staff. But that was my favorite thing about this entire figure. Um, when I show you the videos of how bad these hands are and how loose they are, and you see the staff just spinning around in a circle, uh, one comment I saw uh, on my post on Facebook was I was demonstrating how much uh, springiness was in the legs by squeezing the leg and letting it go and seeing it spring back into that wide stance. The person thought it was an action gimmick, and I was showing if you squeeze the legs, it would spin the staff. It was it was so bad. <laughs> Just really, really weird problems with this figure. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, again, the wide stance looks great. It's just when you try to bring those legs closer, they literally just spring back into this wide stance. It's better now that I've been moving the figure around quite a bit, trying to pose him, but it still springs back and forth like pretty badly. Um, again, staff looks great. 
face looks better here. It just it looks like he smeared dirt all over his face, and you just have that giant yellow grin. I wish they had given you swappable heads, and that they had an open mouth version, like he was yelling or screaming, like he does in the box. It looks really nice in the box with the open mouth, and it looks like he's kind of like just like got this whole angry attack thing going, and it looks a lot better. Again, you can see the cape; it's pretty meh. <laughs> Uh, another close-up of the figure here, basically, or sorry, a close-up of the figure here. Uh, again, the wash is a little distracting. The teeth aren't quite so bright here, but they're still like overly obvious. Um, here, when I had the the figure holding the staff, it just kept spinning around, so I had to like just plant it against his body so that it had somewhere to rest. Otherwise, it just would have been upside down. And yeah, it just really cheap and took away from the uh the experience of shooting the figure personally i really didn't enjoy it the same uh pose you just saw a moment ago just basically the, the whole wide angle bodied version this looks great i love the way this picture came out i think it actually looks really good makes the figure look great um the sculpting again is actually quite nice the other odd thing too mine shipped with the legs turned completely backwards because they actually do swivel here at the boot cut and the legs were completely backwards. So I had to, I didn't realize it at first. I took a couple of pictures and I realized it looked off. And then I looked closer at the box and saw that the actual peaks were meant to be facing the front. And so I had to spin the legs around and put them in the proper position. And those are also quite loose. But they do stay in place, though, a lot better than what the wrists do. But you can see here how the staff is resting against the body. I had to do that, otherwise it would not you know, stay put. I couldn't have him reaching out and actually act like he was aiming the weapon unless it was completely against his body and was like just resting uh, against him. It was quite frustrating. Uh, just a straight on, straight shot of the figure. He looks a little chunky here, so I, you know, that was the other problem I had with the sculpt is that the head looks tiny and then he's got this kind of like broad, you know, chest area and he's a little too kind of wide. Again, you can see the legs are still quite wide. That is as tight as you can get them. Um, it doesn't look bad here. This is after basically shooting for over an hour and bending the legs in and out and in and out and trying to get them just to stay down close enough that they weren't anywhere near as wide as they were when I first got him. Like his legs were actually way out here originally. They were off to the sides and it looked like he was like the letter A. It was so wide. This is actually a lot better than what it had been. They're a lot closer to just being in like just a straight on dead stance. But like if I move that leg, it would just spring back to that position. It won't come any closer to the, the, the middle of his body. Um, and again, like I said, over time working it in like the person had mentioned, it was getting better and, and it might still get better. And I think that people probably didn't have this problem whatsoever. It was just when I took it out, I was just blown away by how bad the situation was initially. And I thought it was going to be like that for good until I saw the post. And then I decided to keep working with it until it felt better. But in doing so, the figure makes a lot of really bad noises. Like it, uh, like it sounds like you're going to snap the legs off because it makes a really loud creaking sound like you're actually wearing the plastic out. Uh, that was also the other freaky thing about this figure is just a lot of the parts made odd noises when you were trying to pose them. And it just sounded like the, the, you know, the cheap plastic was about to snap or something. And again, the plastic to me felt cheap. People may think the complete opposite and think it's great. I, I don't know. I just, I've owned a lot of action figures over my lifespan, and, or my lifetime, sorry, and I, I don't, you know, whenever figures have felt like this, they normally have broken in the past. And yeah, like, I don't know that this thing would live through children playing with it. I think they would break it. But um, the collectors who are just going to pose this thing and leave them in place, they're probably going to be pretty good with him. But um, again, I think the figure looks quite good when you get the right you know lighting on him and when you get the actual uh you know the details showing and without these teeth just blaring through uh it, it can look quite good and uh you know with the right shadows on and the right lighting he he's actually quite nice looking uh just again i i think they could have done a better job with him personally uh, the sculpting on the face leaves a little bit to, to be desired, like I said, like these little weird grooves in the face and everything are a bit off, and the giant teeth is just, you know, if it was just a little smaller, I think it would look a lot better. 
Um, with the glows on the eyes and everything, the effects added, I think the figure looks a lot better than it does without them. But uh, I, I do like the way the shadows fall around the, the, the chin area and everything else. It looks pretty menacing and it looks kind of, you know, like Skeletor should. But uh, just, you know, I, I think it would have been nice to have an alternate head that wasn't quite so, you know, grin heavy. <laughs> This is just a composite of a couple of the photos here, the same one we just looked at a moment ago and the one previous, and I just wanted to kind of do a little bit of a compilation with the uh, the different glows. I wasn't sure what looked better, the green or the red. I think I actually do prefer the red uh, for the glows in the eyes and the weapon, um, but I think in the series a lot of the time his eyes were green, if I remember correctly. I liked the series, but I wasn't completely into it, um, so I wasn't paying a lot of attention to it. I mean, I was really looking forward to seeing it when they announced it and everything, this whole idea of a whole new Masters of the Universe slash He-Man, uh, series coming out and, you know, Kevin Smith, I'm not a humongous fan of, but I thought, okay, with him involved, it might be decent. Yeah. <laughs> you know, hopefully the second half of the series is better than the first, I'll put it that way. But, um, yeah, I was still okay with it. I thought it was actually quite good, but that's not what this whole review is about. It's more about the quality of this figure. And I don't own any other figures from this line, so maybe the others are better. This is all just based strictly on the Skeletor figure at this point. But I have seen people talking about the quality of the other figures as well. Uh, Mothman, where his, you know, his vined hand is way too heavy and he can't hold it upright. And it's, it also spins around because it can't stay put. And uh, the He-Man, I think people aren't really happy with the overall look of the He-Man, personally. I think he's okay outside of the head. I wish they'd done a better job with the head. But uh, the rest seems okay. But I've seen mixed reviews. Some people seem very happy with the line. Some people not so much. Um, my opinions right now are all just strictly based on the fact that I, I do happen to have the Skeletor figure. And based on it, I'm not that impressed. So I, I may pick up the He-Man just to have the two together. But um, I'm not 100% sure just yet. And there's where I just went with the same edit, but I wanted to do the red eyes on everything. And I think it does look better with the red eyes, personally. Uh, another edit, just a bit of a wider shot. Again, having to have the stab resting against the body. Here I was just trying to draw, you know, do basically a, a somewhat coming out of the shadows sort of thing where he's actually in more like a darker area. We're just getting about, you know, the light falling on one half of the body and just the way the, the staff looks in the shot. I loved it just because of the actual shadows and everything and the overall lighting I thought looked quite good on this. But again, that smile, because it's so, you know, washed out, it's like you lose a lot of the detail in the face around the teeth and everything unless you get, you know, enough like shadows on the teeth. It just looks like a big mass of, you know, yellow paint or, like, light yellow paint or off-white paint. Just didn't like that. I, I wish they'd done a better job with that. Uh, same edit. I just do the Castle Grayskull uh, artwork in the background. You can see the power sword and everything in there. And I, I thought it looked kind of neat, so I just do it all together. And the following edit's going to be similar as well, but with the uh, another one of the the figure poses there. I thought this one was actually quite nice, the way it all came together. And uh, just like the way it all it looks, you know, as this one composition. Uh, we're down to our last image. And this is basically just the one that I used for the splash. And I just kind of wanted to do it like an old school sort of 80s cartoon look to it with the fog and everything around the old Snake Mountain design. Uh, bad choice for the, uh, the weapons kind of glow, but overall, you know, not, not the, you know, best figure that I've ever owned, possibly one of the worst personally, in my opinion, but I do like the look of it. I just wish there weren't so many quality issues with it, and I'm not sure what Mattel is doing with this line and if they are paying attention with the quality. I mean, I'm sure they must be. It's just odd that I've seen like so many people also saying that they've had similar problems where they have loose joints and loose parts and you know stiff joints in, in the wrong areas and uh, just all they they all seem to feel the same way, especially about the cape and you know being as cheaply made as it is and uh, 
the, the feel of the plastic not being quite what they were expecting. I think they, they were hoping for a bit better, but like I said, there are a lot of people that I talked to as well that say they love the figure and they think it looks great and they are happy with the quality of it. So again, you know, to each their own. And I'm glad there are people out there that really did enjoy this figure. Uh, I just, I personally, I kind of was hoping for better. And I really was looking forward to this line being better than what it seems to be. Uh, and hopefully the, the newer releases of the figures, like the Scaraglows and the Man-at-Arms, and as much as people don't seem to like the Tila design, I, I don't mind it personally. I think it's fine. Uh, like, Tila looks quite good in the figure, and the actual designs and the sculpts of the figures are quite good for the most part. Uh, the tiny head thing bothers me still, and the sculpt on the He-Man face, and the Skeletor face looks good in certain ways and not so great in others. But, again, just my personal opinion of the figure and of what I've seen of the figure so far. Uh, I love the look of the Moss Man, but I've heard bad things about, like, you know, again, the joints and the uh, accessories or the lack thereof in some cases and everything as well. And again, Moss Man wasn't exactly one of those, you know, characters you'd be rushing out to pick up, I guess. You know, a lot of people don't seem to understand why he was part of the first wave. But, um, I mean, he's, um, you know, he's in the series earlier on in the story, so I'm assuming that's why they brought him out initially, because... He kind of dies so quickly that I guess they wanted to just involve him in the lineup as early as possible. And I think the figure and the sculpt looks great. I, I mean, some people seem disappointed with the missing, you know, fuzzy moss on him. I, I'm kind of, you know, good or, you know, I'm good without it or good with it. If they've done, you know, a version with it, that'd be great too. Uh, without it, I still think he looks great. I, I like the sculpt and everything. But, um, yeah, like this, when I started hearing that he can't even support his own wrist and his wrist, and like, you know, falls over and everything, uh, I decided not to get him. Uh, maybe in the future I may pick him up if I can, you know, either work out something through a friend uh, in a trade or something, or possibly if he, you know, goes on for a reasonable price, I might pick him up. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he's definitely one I can live without. Uh, <laughs> so, again... Uh, sorry for the negative video, guys. It's just not, you know, one of those things I was looking forward to doing. But at the same time, I wanted to at least put that out there to let people know and at least have them understand my feelings behind shooting this figure. And again, a lot of, you know, what I'm saying is based mainly on having to try to shoot this figure and display him. Like, when you display him in a pose, he looks totally fine. He looks great. Uh, you know, no problems with that. It's just more trying to position him and pose him. I couldn't do a lot of the poses I wanted to do because it just wouldn't, like, keep the staff in place. It just kept spinning upside down and falling out of place and everything and just the wide legs and everything. I couldn't really do any really tight kind of upright standing poses where he's actually looking a little menacing looking down or looking up and just making it look like he's actually kind of being shot on an angle looking up at him because his legs were so wide that it looked like a really weird stance. But like I said, those are my issues. And like I said, I will add those extra videos that I shot separately of the, the issues I'm talking about. And you can see how bad they are, you know, and you can you know, decide on your own if you think that's a bad thing or not. Uh, me personally, it, it kind of took away from my experience with the figure and left me not really wanting to do any more photos than I had to of him. But uh, again, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's informative. And uh, like I said, if you enjoy He-Man and you enjoy the lineup and everything else like that, and it's mainly to just kind of pose them and everything, they're, they're not so bad. It's just it's working with them and trying to get them to do the things you want them to do in photographs and everything that really took away from this figure, in my opinion, and left it as one of my least favorite figures that I own at this point because I, I just couldn't do much with him in regards to posing. And his upper body, like his torso, his arms, everything were fine. The wrists, the wide legs, um, awkward posing of the feet too didn't really help because if he tried to angle his feet, he'd fall over. Um, things like that took away from me liking the figure, you know, more than I did. But uh, anyway, guys, have a great day. Take care. If you like the videos I'm doing, please like and subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications bell and I'll let you know when the new ones pop up, okay? Thanks so much for all your support. Have a great day, guys. Take care. Yeah, guys, so unfortunately not terribly impressed with this Skeletor figure. I mean, the release of the figure looks okay. The sculpting, the molding is decent. Uh, problems that I ran into are the elbows. The way they're actually sculpted, you really can't bend them any further than that, so you can't really do a straight-arm pose with the weapon. Uh, so you can't really have him 
act like he's facing the camera and attacking directly. That's the other really major problem here. As you can see, like literally the list, the wrists on both sides are so loose, they just spin. And the weight of the weapon just has his arm just spinning around like crazy. It looks like it was meant to be some kind of spinning action attack. Uh, the other problem is how the legs were designed. Um, not to mention the quality of plastic doesn't seem all that hot. But um, on top of that, the leg design here, you can't bring his legs all that close together. So he's in this really wide stance. And uh, you can't really do much about it. He doesn't stand very well. And then it's got this weird springy sort of plastic. This was much worse the other day. I was told by somebody that it's just a matter of trying to work it in. But like the legs just spring. So when you're really trying to pose him, they just keep kind of springing back. And uh, it makes it very hard to pose him. Um, overall, the quality of the plastic seem a little poor. The cape is kind of cheap looking. Um, yeah, probably one of the worst figures I've actually bought in a long time. The wash on the face is a little too extreme. You really can't, uh, you know, do much about that. Like, I like that they tried to add the wash, but, like, it just doesn't look so great. Um, yeah, just not what I was hoping for. I was really hoping for better. But, uh, you know, it is what it is, and hopefully the other figures in the line are better, but I haven't heard much about the figures being all that great from other collectors. And, uh, well, he does look half decent when you finally get imposed. Overall, just pretty disappointed with the overall figure, unfortunately. Not one of the better ones for photography, especially, and definitely not one of Matt Mattel's better uh, figures, unfortunately. Thanks, guys. Another problem with these figures, unfortunately, was the packaging. Well, it looks great, and it's really nicely done with the actual uh, artwork and everything else. looks great and everything. Opening the box is a real pain if you're a collector and you try to keep everything as mint as you can. Uh, the dents and creases that appear in the boxes, just from the shipping and everything, are pretty bad. And then also, what I did find when just trying to cut the tape and get it into the flaps to actually open the box here, uh, they just started tearing away. It was really frustrating because I really like to try and keep my things as mint as I can get them. And like just the boxes just started tearing just trying to get them open just to take them out of the box even. Uh, another hilarious thing that I did find was kind of uh, annoying as well was they had this great shot of him here on the side of the box with the open palm. And it looks actually menacing because you have that open palm, um, you know, look with the figure. And then suddenly when you get the one that they included with the figure and he's got that open palm, looks menacing and everything else in the pose, you get this. And it's like, it looks like he's karate chopping, <laughs> as opposed to, uh, you know, basically, you know, holding his hand out in that, like, open menacing pose. You get this really weird karate chop looking hand. And again, the elbow, as you can see, it doesn't go very straight. Uh, again, the hands are super loose. But uh, yeah, like, I, I don't know that this pose... Looks anywhere as nice as that pose. When you have that open palm and you have that sort of look in the attack on the the open palm. I'm sorry, not giving you the lighting the best there. So you can see that open palm in the artwork and it looks really nice. And then that's what you get. They didn't spread the fingers or anything, so it looks terrible uh, when you're trying to do anything with him because you get this really weird, like I said, karate chop as opposed to... Uh, you know, an open palm. But, yeah, yeah, I, you know, again, could be much worse, though. But uh, definitely not one of the better figures I own. <laughs>